All right, last session of the day, guys. Thank you for coming to this one. Uh, so the way this is going to go is I'm going to be doing more of the UX side, so not quite as technical. And then Dan's going to show some examples of what we were talking about towards the end. Um, so today we're going to be talking about forms. So we've come across quite a few um, that have come in that... Um, is there like a microphone? There is. I'll try to is oh, there? oh, is there like yeah. a for, for amplifying? Yeah, it's a certain noise. Right? This way? Okay. All right, thank you for bearing with us for that. Uh, we're tested, we're good to go, last session. Um, so as I was saying, I'm gonna go through a few UX processes that we've been implementing on some of our form designs to begin with. And then Dan's gonna come in at the end to show how some of it's implemented in for front end. Uh, so I'm Jen. Uh, I'm the lead UX designer at ZipTech. We have a small team of a few other designers as well. And then, you want to introduce yourself? No? Nope? Okay. I'll do this later. is Dan. We'll <laughs> He's a full stack developer at ZipTech. Uh, so, we've encountered quite a few forms recently. This is not working on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so some of the ones we've been working with, we've had people coming in that have had a various mood set. So some of them are coming in to use a form that they're really unhappy to try to use. And there's a few things we wanted to do and factor in all the different moods they have going into each step of the process where we wanted to see how we can improve these. And this is not just for a designer to know to go into these forms. It's for developers as well as project managers, product owners to really understand how they can be improving these on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be a specific use case or just very basic things you can do to your form to improve them. Uh, so one of the examples we used recently was this uh, volunteer request site. So a coordinator, maybe it'd be a teacher at a K through 12 school, could post a volunteer opportunity. So it was a very long form, probably about 80 fields or so and they would send it out for college students to be able to find them to be part of the volunteer session. Uh, so we went through and tried to see how we could section things out a little bit better, make it a little more interactive, and provide a little additional functionality without adding too much of the user to fill out. Uh, so then we also got a government tax portal recently. So to uh, go through this long process, we have people that are filling this out that the result of filling this out hurts their business. So going into it, we knew there was no way to really make them satisfied with their experience, but there were still things that we could do to help them along the way. 
So what are the main things that we run into with forms? What's the day-to-day -day thing that we come across that can always hurt our experience? Uh, so sometimes it's where the label is placed, so it might be in the form, in the form field rather than above it. So anytime you go to click on it, it disappears. Um, it might be that it's equidistant to two different fields where you don't even know which field it's for. Uh, there might be the example of a button just not being in the place you expect it to be. So usually when you go to fill out a form, there's one button that you hit to submit it at the end. So when I, use, I know when I use the PGW portal, I've been using it for years, and every single time I click that payment center button rather than continue. Uh, just because it's not the only button, it looks exactly like the other one, and it's towards the end. Um, so also for scannability of our forms, we want to make sure that the field length is an expected length. So for zip code, we know there's only five digits going in there. So if we make every form field the same length, we can't scan and easily identify which section's what. Uh, so not being able to section out, if you have about more than eight to ten fields, you want to make sure you're creating sections for them. Uh, that's a general standard that might vary. You might even create sections of three to four fields, but we do need to make sure that we're sectioning in a way that's digestible to the user. Uh, so this is probably the biggest pain point for me. Um, if you go to, if you forgot your password, even a short little form to put in your email address and password, it is a big pain point to submit that, have forgotten it, and you still have to keep filling out the email address every time. Um, so this is true of a small two-field form as well as the long form. You want to make sure that the fields all stay that you filled out that are correct. So there's, there's really a deeper issue here. It's not that these little things are getting to us. They shouldn't, it shouldn't get to us to have to give a one-word answer. Um, but we are asking a lot of the user. We go through a site frequently and we have we're asked different things we have to do like navigate a site find out different information um, and it's not a question that needs to be answered when we put out a form we're asking a lot of questions that need to be answered and we don't want to do it um, so recently i came across this really great site called the laws of ux um, i would recommend going to it it's only about 13 or 14 different laws but i think they apply very well to a lot of the different tactics we're talking about here So I think a lot of these really do apply uh, to forms in particular. So one that I thought was really applicable is Hicks Law. So as we're giving quite a few choices, every additional choice we give makes more work for the user. So if you have uh, a radio section, you have eight options versus 12, um, reduce it as much as possible. You want to give your user options, but you also want to make them think for too long. You want them to be able to scan it and make a decision quickly. Uh, so then there's Tesla's Law, which is a little bit of a counterpoint to the other one. So there is a certain amount of complexity you have, and you can't always get it to a smaller form. We want to ask the user for less work, but it's really asking them for more work if we take away functionality that they need. Uh, I hate pronouncing this, this is like Garnick effect, I think it is. Uh, so people, if you, if you have a task list, let's say you have 10 tasks that you need to complete throughout the day, if you complete eight of them and there's still two left that you haven't gotten to, you're not thinking about the eight, you're thinking about the two that you still need to get to. So if you're going through your form, um, if we, you want to be putting validators there real time, so you're not hitting submit and then forgetting about certain tasks that you need to come back to. So you want to be doing that right away. Uh, so this is a big one, I think, for forms. So the, the sum of an, an experience is the sum of its parts. So when you get to the first part of the form or your site, you're making an assumption and a decision about it within the first two to three seconds. So where what your decision is there, that's your starting point of your mood, and that's going to affect the way you take it in the rest of the journey. So if you have a long form, let's say five steps or so, you want to make sure that the first step is not asking too much of the user. So you want to make sure the smaller parts of the form are the first part, and the middle is more where you're putting the chunk out information. Um, and that also, for the end of it, if you're leaving your form, the last field you filled out is what you're going to remember. But that doesn't necessarily mean that needs to be the shorter one. 
So let's say you have a feedback survey. You're going through it. You have feedback as you're going as you're going down, answering questions, and usually you expect. Do you have any additional comments at the end? That's a big ask because it's a large paragraph you're probably typing out, but they're happy that you asked them that. So there, you do have to assess it per case. Uh, so the Pareto Principle. So this is to say that there are certain parts of your form that you can't always put your best effort for. Some of them you need to focus on more than others. And there are only a certain percentage that are really going to hit the nail anyway. So um, that's not to say don't be detail-oriented, but it's to really put your focus into a few good things. So what, is, what does this all mean? How do we apply this to specific situations? Now, we've gone through the really common things we can consider as we're going through forms, um, but I've, I've come up with a couple ways of which I've taken these principles and applied them to each individual part of the task. So I have a shorter version. So this is the initial assumption method. So in this method, this is free research. This is not to say you use this as a definite to go into your research. This is, or it is to go into your research. It's not to be used as final. You want to be going through all your personas and develop those. Um, but from the beginning, I like to make some general assumptions about what my audience might be. So recently I was trying to buy a tent on this site. So I wanted to use this as a case of um, a time where you're not in a stressed environment, it's a little more positive. So what can we assume about the people that are trying to buy a tent on here? We know that they're not in a hurry saying, I need to buy a tent right now. Um, they're usually coming to it to do it for something later on. So they are, it's not something we need to get them through quickly. They're probably going to be a little more on the calm side and they're not going to be wanting this big, modern, even brutalist type look, we want it to represent the environment they're going to be in. And they also might be less tech savvy. Uh, so we can break this down a little bit further without going into our full persona research. This is to just break down the use cases of how people will use the checkout form. So we have people that are looking that have looked plenty of times, they know what they're doing, they don't need much help. And on the other side of things, we have the newer campers who really don't know where to begin. They might need a guide to do so. They want to see more details, and they want a little more hand-holding. Uh, so based on what we've assessed about them, we can come up with a few goals that we can use while going into um, our form design. So for them, we know we want to maintain the environment that they're excited for. So we don't want to do anything overwhelming. I'm not going to go add neon colors to the form. It's going to be a lot more white space driven. Um, also to get to all of the users, the optional guide will help all of them. If you have a clear outline of the product details, that's also for even the most experienced user. So I think they did a really good job of taking that personality into mind. Uh, they're using a lot of white space, they're using a typeface that's not so modern and bold, it's more organic and reminiscent of what they're going to be a part of. They're using messaging. Uh, that's a little more nice. This is not a intense professional site. This is more of a leisurely site. So this works with the tech specs. Um, and they're also providing more information as they go along here. They have, they don't have to provide the color, the size, all that in addition to there, but they do. And these are, this is not a revolutionary form by any means. It's more that it's making sure they're paying attention to the details and needs of their user. Uh, so going into the longer part of how you would assess these tasks, uh, we do a task analysis method. So this is very similar to the customer journey maps that you might have seen. Um, and this is making sure we're putting emphasis on the mood aspect of it. So going back to the government portal that we did before, um, to go over the steps that a user needs to take for that. So these are both um, individual business owners, so they're filling this out for their personal use with one account, or there's a CPA account that might be filling it out for 20 to even 100 accounts. Uh, so their, their process, they have to log on every month, select their account, uh, select the month that they're filing for, uh, go through the form of entering their numerical aspect, and then get to payment. <coughs> so let's look at the persona that we've researched a little bit further for the CPA accountant. So this is the one end of the spectrum, somebody that's coming to the portal the most to factor in all their different accounts on the site. Um, so they're pretty used to working with these forms, so they don't need as much hand-holding. 
uh, they manage quite a few accounts, so we need to take into account that they have a lot to sift through, and they aren't as stressed going into it. So based on what we know about them, we can say for goals that we want to make sure that creating accounts is a simple process for them. Finding them, if they have 85, they need to be able to search and find those quickly. Um, and also, they need to be able to provide all these reports back to their clients, so they need an easy way to act, um, export them afterwards. So what we started creating were these, um, this is kind of a combination of a customer journey map with a task analysis, um, but really with emphasis on what the mood factors are. So we started defining what the process is, that four step, and what their thought process might be throughout it. So if we're looking at the first step, finding a tax account for the, um, for the CPA accountant, they, their mood factors are they have to look through a lot of different accounts. That's pretty stressful. Um, and to see the amount of accounts they have, they see, hey, five of these, I have to file for by the end of the day. It, in, it induces a little stress for them. So they're a little bit lower end of the spectrum. So there's, there's a good amount of research that can go into this. This is our best guess. This isn't a definite where we know every CPA accountant is gonna feel this way, but we can make an assumption. Uh, so when we get to finding a month to file, it's not as stressful for them. They're choosing one month. There's not many to go through. So um, they're a little bit happier here. And when they get to the form itself, what we saw before is a lot of the labels were really long. All of them were around the same length. So it wasn't exactly an easy experience for them. Their uh, fields were pretty shallow, so they didn't have the transparency to see their numbers clearly. They might have entered something wrong. Um, and then when they go to complete it, their task is done. They are not the ones paying it, so that doesn't alter their mood. They're done and they want to export and send it to their client. So what we go through and do is see where we can make recommendations based on these certain points. Uh, so our recommendation for the first point is really important. This is the worst they're feeling throughout the journey. So this is the one we really want to focus on. And it's also the first step they have. So we want to make sure that one's really solid. Um, so we went through an added search for them. We took all the accounts out of a drop down and we made sure they had visibility into each of the accounts without clicking. And they were organized by task meet. So anything that had um, a lot of files to maybe things were overdue, those were towards the top and red. And anything that was complete was towards the bottom. So they had that help throughout the journey. Um, so for the, we also want to leverage the ones that are in the spots where they're in a better mood. So for something like finding the months of file, that's a pretty easy task for them but they want to make sure they're aware that they're filing for the right month throughout the process. So let's take that spot and make sure we're reiterating that throughout the process. Uh, so for the taxable amounts area, that we had a lot of recommendations for that, and this was really taking into account those common pain points we have from before. So making the fields um, the, the right length for what they should be, putting those under the um, labels so they, if there wasn't so much back and forth and also putting some of the additional information into tooltips so it wasn't so much text at once. Um, and then for the mood factor at the end, they're already in a pretty loose mood, so there's not too much we need to do there, but we do want to make sure the button for them to get back so they can export their account and send it to their client is there, so we worked on that a little bit further. So afterwards, we try to do a cross-comparison and see how it compares. Uh, so it's not this drastic difference. There's no way we're going to be able to get every head up here towards the top, but we've gotten it a little higher. Uh, so quickly we can go through the um, up other end of the spectrum. So we have the small business owner that is filing individually. So going into this, they are in a horrible mood going to visit this site. They are paying something that hurts their business, and going into it they're going to be in a bad mood, leaving it, same. Um, so that's something to take into account. They only have one account to manage, so it's not as much for them to sift through. But they're also not as used to this as the CPA accountants, so we need to handhold a little bit more throughout here. So based on what we've learned for personality-based goals, um, we can decrease the length of form fields, so that's easier for them to scan. We want to make sure that the form really makes sense to them and they can read through quickly. Um, but I think the most important thing here, which is a little independent of the form, was to make sure that we're trying to take how 
upset they are about what's hurting their business and turn it into a positive of what they're helping by paying that. So what we wanted to show throughout the journey were certain aspects that their payments helping. So um, in this instance, the tax was helping education systems. So maybe showing your payment today uh, got 10 books for an elementary school. So those kind of things help increase mood as well, but that's independent of the farm. So we did a map for this. It looks quite different. So this, they start out coming into it pretty low, um, but they have to select an account that they really don't have to. They only have one. We should know that from the system that we only need to select that one. Uh, finding a month, also pretty easy for them. Getting to the actual, I forgot to get this. Um, getting to the submittable tax, the tax allowances, uh, they are pretty confused by what's going on with how the labels are set up. So we made sure we're setting the labels again below the, or the fields below the label, making sure the label is pretty clear. Um, and towards the end, they're sticker shocked. They see the price that they have to pay. That's going to affect their business. So at the end, it's pretty tough to get that uh, that level of detail up. But they, uh, but we have a few recommendations for that. So for at the beginning, we can skip that step. We already know. Um, we can make sure that it defaults to the previous month. Maybe they get an email that says file for this month, and they can even skip step two. We only have two steps at that point. Um, and then for the end, we can really bring in that messaging of what their payment helped. So that's the difference at the end. Also a slight difference, but still helps quite a, quite a bit. Um, so what can we do to consistently bring some of these points in? So we have these common pay points we talked about. Um, how do we drive those home? So for something like a drop down, if we have a lot of different options, something like a um, country, I'm sure all of you have had to scroll to the United States for a very long time, so having search there really helps. Um, being able to position uh, chunk forms, so if you want to ask a question up front to lead them into the form, that helps a lot too. Um, so also showing the step by step and having arrows to get between different sections of it. Um, and then putting things in, knowing when to put things into tooltips or underneath the field or as part of the description. Generally, our just the label we don't want to be too long, so adding a description below or in a tooltip helps. And real-time validation. So these are some of the things that Dan's going to show you. In this uh, so making sure that the fields are below the label, so you're, you're not looking back and forth each time. On mobile, it, you, you want to account for both left and right users, so you don't want to put it on one side of the screen or the other for the submit button. You want to make sure it's easily reachable in the middle for everyone. Um, so and for autocomplete, it's pretty annoying when your when your computer does have all these things saved, and a lot of fields do fill this out for you, but some don't. So that's something easy we can add as well. Um, and making sure we're using placeholder text correctly, um, really giving those clues there rather than the label. So you want to do it's challenge time. It's challenge time. Hello. Um, let's just speed, speed up the screen. Let's see how that goes. Um, hi, can everyone hear me? Uh, my name is Daniel Zinkevich. I am a developer at ZivTech. How are we doing on time? Uh, 25. Oh, we're doing great on time. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm a developer at ZivTech. Um, and are there any other developers in here? Okay, not a lot, but a few. Cool. Um, so I am currently uh, taking a slight career change. I've been a back-end developer for a very long time, but I'm trying to get into uh, more, more front-end um, type of things again. Um, so Jen was looking for someone who could sort of try to take some of the principles that she was talking about and place them into a form that she had designed. So um, Jen created this uh, lecture form that we, could, that we could create that would use a lot of the principles that she was talking about. Um, and I did my, my best to implement it. So we have um, this, so I made this, this demo site. So we're going to do a, do a live demo. 
Um, and this is our Pure Moods uh, demo lecture series where we're going to be creating lectures using this form. This feels like it's a weird size. There we go. That's probably like more appropriate. Oh no, is that too small? That's too small. Let's, oh. It's nice to see the whole screen. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Uh, no, I'm going to go bigger. Can everyone read that? Okay. Alex isn't even looking. Uh, cool. Um, so the the first thing I did is I used something called um, field groups uh, to sort of take this long form and chunk it into these these three sections. Um, so it says step one, step two, and step three, which is a is a hint to everyone that's going to be using this site that they have three steps that they shouldn't get too excited after this first round because there's, there's still a way to go to have all the data that we need for the lecture. Um, to submit it, I guess we're having people submit to our lecture series about our moods. And also science, I think, is also in our categories. Um, so title, you've probably seen this before. Um, but what I found was I, I used the bootstrap theme, um, which some of you developers may be familiar with. Um, and I found that in the bootstrap theme, all of the labels, well, they were inconsistent. Some of the labels were next to the, the field for some field types, and some of them were over the field for other field types. Some of them were actually field sets uh, that had a legend. And some of them were, it was, it was inconsistent. Um, so one thing that I did is I made all of them have, even if they're different types. Uh, so for example, if we, if we look at the code, um, this I know is going to be too small. Let me bump that up. So if we look at the code, this here, uh, the, this title is a label. And then this down here is a field set legend. Um, so what I did is I just, in my CSS, I just made them all look the same uh, instead of having a bunch of different styles for each uh, different type of title. Um, so then I moved on. So the title is pretty easy. So this is my cool lecture about, Jen, what's my lecture about? Pure moods. Okay. Pure moods. Um, and so the description, it's... It's pretty much, you've all seen a description before. Um, and all, all I did with this one is I added a little bit at the bottom that says, um, let people know what it's about. Um, because otherwise, description could mean a few things. But this, is, this makes it explicit that people are, know that they're supposed to be saying, this is what it's about. Um, then we have this text format thing. This is all core Drupal in, in this description part. Uh, so this just pops up all of the different things that people can use in this WYSIWYG, which is pretty basic. Um, so this, this section in here, in the description, this is all core Drupal. Um, so then we moved on to the category. There were a lot of categories, and I was concerned that it would be too much work to go through them all and find the thing. Um, so what I used is a library called Select2. There's also Chosen, which a lot of people use for this. Um, but let's say, um, I don't think there's anything. No, Moods isn't a category, but maybe like Psychology is. So this is going to be my, um, I guess description isn't required, but I'll add one. This is for my Anya fan club. Good for all fans of music. Uh, and so, yeah, so I was, sorry, getting back to the category. This is select two, and it allows me to um, sort of guess what my options are, and it'll filter them out so I don't have to go through this huge list. Um, I was really happy with the, uh, the effect that select two had. Um, chosen also works. Um, I found select two integrate a little bit better into the vertical tabs that we're using over here. So that's why I went with that one. Um, I also, I didn't like the small radio buttons for the degree level. So I used some CSS and JavaScript 
to make it very clear which one uh, you're picking. Um, I also, in Jen's design, um, she actually had the degree level above the category, but I moved that one down to the bottom just because I thought that was like a really easy choice and it's about on the same level as the category. Uh, and just like give something, something, give everyone something easy to wrap up this stage of the form with. Um, also, I used yellow here instead of a gray because if, if undergraduate is gray and graduate is white, uh, it's not going to be entirely clear which one is active. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we're thinking about that too. Um, I, didn't want, I don't want to be like making people having to like click on it just to make sure that they do have a graduate level course. Um, so let's move on. So now people will move on to the date and time. Uh, this is the part of the form that I was probably the least happy with. Um, this is a very stock installation of the Drupal date uh, module and I'm not super happy with it. This is nice that I can choose my date, but I have to enter in a full time here, uh, including whether it's AM or PM. Uh, otherwise, I get an error at the end of the form. Um, and so I did not like that. I am looking for better alternatives as we speak for this. Uh, hopefully, something will come to me, but. That's, that, I'm not, I wasn't super happy with that. But um, I don't think people would really be too happy with that either. Yeah, I feel like um, if you, sh you should be able to skip the minutes and seconds and it would just yeah. go to, you know. Yeah. Create a, um, a drop down. I'm sorry? Create a drop down. And yeah, down. yeah, that was, that was one of the options you can do. But then that makes That's this so also an opt down, a drop down, sorry. Um, you can, you can graphically present them with different things. But really? Yeah, I'm talking about okay. CSS. I mean, this is oh, okay, time. okay. This is something else. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to use as much stock yeah. Drupal things as possible to keep this uh, non-technical, as non-technical as possible. But yes, we could we could do that if we really wanted to. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, but in, in general, I wasn't happy with the way this worked out. Um, if I was going to do it again, what I would probably do is have one field for date and then ignore the time altogether and then have another field below it where you could just enter in the time or you could not. Uh, and maybe there would be some validation on it. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't like the date module's time. The, the actual date, I love. This is great. This is super easy. This is how you expect it. You could also type things in really, really quickly. You know, uh, oops, oh, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so that's probably what I would do if I was going to build this form again. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is the location. So this, this ended up being actually the biggest part of the form just because there were so many things that we would need to know. Um, I think all of these lectures are on college campuses, I guess. Uh, so this is a Pure Moods College tour uh, that we are having submissions for. Um, so this is the same thing as before on the campus. Uh, and again, this is a field set legend and not a label, but um, that's how it is. Uh, I'm not sure how that would interact with screen readers. I hope they would just Actually, handle it. Uh, a field set uh, is ideal for a list because it provides context for the screen reader to understand what those individual list items are. Okay. So that's, that's why that yeah, that shift. Oh, right, and then these would be labels, too. And these would be the labels. Oh, sorry. These would be the the, the university city would be the labels, and yeah. that would be the field. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thank you. Um, An accessibility issue. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're going we're gonna to choose university city, um, just because, I don't know, I like West Philly more than the other ones. Um, and then again, we, we used select two. Uh, there was a list of 900 different buildings I was able to find uh, just to show you how uncomfortable it would be to find the one that you want, and, you know. Um, so like if I know my building, my lecture is gonna be in an arts building, I would just have to type in arts and that, that limits me to five. Um, and so I'm just gonna, uh, let's go with the Fisher, cool. Um, and so that's where I went with that one. And that's select two again. 
the same module that, or the same plugin that we used before. Um, the room number, I made sure that this one, Bootstrap by default, places your, your text fields the whole way across. Um, so I had to override this one with CSS, um, which felt weird, and maybe I could figure out a better way to do that so you could do that through the UI. Um, but you know, for now, I think room 200 is probably <coughs> sufficient. Um, so then we have this address. Uh, so this was actually a field set within a field set. Um, so what I did to keep all of these um, fields in line is I actually gave this some, some negative padding over here. I don't know if it shows up that well on the screen. Can you see that little line there? Um, that's actually to the left of where these things would line up. Uh, Drupal by default would, would place this uh, starting here, and so I just gave it some negative padding to put it back there and to keep all of the fields uh, in a nice orderly line. Um, for the country, I had a hard time picking the default country, so I had to end up um, actually overriding that with a module um, because otherwise it would just start with Afghanistan. If, we're, if our three options are University City, Center City, and Queen Lane, we can assume that those are all in the United States. We could probably even start people off with Philadelphia and Pennsylvania as well, um, but I didn't do that because I'm just thinking of it now, uh, which is, it's fine. Um, so, uh, hey Ivan, what's, what's a good address for the Fisher Fine Arts Library in University City? It's like 3400 Walnut. Okay, 3400, thank you. Um, Ivan works for UPenn, Street. that's why I asked. <laughs> Street. Walnut Street? No, Walnut Ave. Walnut Street? Oh, Walnut Ave is the one that's out in the down there. You're right. Um, there's also a Walnut Ave in Baltimore. It's confusing. Um, and then again, I didn't use the select two on this one, so you can kind of see the the pain that I have to go through. Go all the way down to Pennsylvania instead of just typing a P and uh, having it filter for me. Uh, and then I know that. Um, unless it's a 4 or 3, I don't know. Um, and last but not least, we have one more field for location notes. And I wasn't sure exactly what that was from the designs. Um, so I thought about what it could be. Um, and so I gave people some, some pretty detailed help text on that one. Let me just zoom in so you can see it. Um, so it says, please add any details people may need to know, such as special instructions to enter, whether they will need ID, handicap, accessibility, etc. Um, so that's that's kind of where I was going with that one. So adding some nice help text that's you know it's out of the way, but it's um, it's there. And that again, that's that's core Drupal. Um, so when you're making these designs, uh, you can do that pretty easily. Um, Another thing that is cool about Bootstrap is that if you create lecture and have a field that is not filled in that's required, it will actually pop you back up here and say, please fill out this field. I, I don't know if you saw that. It's in Drupal Core. Oh, it's in Drupal Core. Oh, it's, it's not just Bootstrap. It, it's a It's a module it's that I installed and forgot, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think it's part of Core and it comes automatically. Isn't that something you would want to change? Because I would find that very frustrating if on the first set I could create lecture, oh, I'm not done. Why would you want to open, like, change that to go to next page of form or that seems very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Lecture, yeah. Every form set or every sort of tab set, that would be something that I would fix immediately. Yeah, I that's, agree. I've yeah. done and I've done that. It's just it's not supported by the field group module. Yeah. Well, there there is a it. there is a field group plugin that does it, but it doesn't. I I had I've had bad experiences with that one where it doesn't tie in with other things as well. But um, ideally, what we would do is if, if I was spending a little more time on this, I would make a custom uh, right. thing for this that would that would do all of that. Um, that is that's a good idea. Um, and that way we could also be doing that validation after each step. Um, and that, that another benefit of that is that you don't have to scroll down all the way down here and then come back up here, you can just say next step. Um, yeah, that's totally, that's totally legit. There's also like field group, like multi-page. Multi that's, that's the one that I 
found. I think it's maybe not ready for Drupal 8 or something. And it it also it doesn't stuff. show you it doesn't show you an overview of the steps by default. Yeah. So you kind of Yeah. Not it's not perfect either way you do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's totally a good point. Um, yeah, so that's sort of my, my experience with like sort of getting back into front end development and trying to implement some of uh, these ideas that Jen had. Um, because I was lucky enough to hear her, her side of the presentation before you all did. Um. I would make one comment. Um, you pick a location, and then you have to put in that location's address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be that, nice that, if that just... That should already be taken care of. Yeah, that would be a real yeah. convenient way to do that. Um, so we could just get rid of this address thing entirely, because it just knows where the Fisher Fine Arts Library is. Because it has, it just uh, sends a text to Ivan and then it comes back. He's the API. <laughs> um, cool. Um, yeah. So that's. Are there any other suggestions for ways we could have sort of thrown more of Jen's ideas into this? I think there's the spacing thing you said goes a little bit off when you have more between the lines. If you can scroll back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you have these like buttons up here where you select University City Center City, mm -hmm. you can active state on the first one already pre-selected, but not when you came here. Also with the building, you had an active state here that was, they were all white when we came here. Mm -hmm. On the one before it, one was already predetermined as yellow. Okay. That was a little confusing. Oh, you mean on the, on the lecture details yes. page? Okay. Um, and then another thing was when you selected the building, I feel like when you pick a campus, it should auto filter the buildings as well because mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you yeah. should limit that as much as you can. Yep, for sure. Yeah, that's a good good idea too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's whether it's a field <laughs> set or a or a label is yeah. what that is. Um, so I didn't make them exact, I guess. Uh, cool. Um, so I'm gonna, gonna hand it back to Jen. Is there a more for after this? Okay. Can you scroll back up if you feel like very interesting. Dress. You're gonna have this clear. This was a label for the section, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if that was larger. If um, there wasn't a separation where you expect there to be a field under it. Uh, so this was our starting point that mm -hmm. we're going through here. Any other suggestions you saw that we can maybe improve this formula? On steps one and two, it would be nice if the button labeled um, down at the bottom instead of saying create lecture, so next step. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, yeah. I might think I have to scroll up to the top, select the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank God, we done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get you going. Any questions? Oh, so oh yeah. Sorry. Let me let me just go through and make oh, sure I got to everything. Uh, so like two, oh, that was the challenge. Yeah, that was that was challenge time. You're gonna challenge us. Oh, did you want to be challenged? I mean, I fixed the date thing. <laughs> it's on the zip tag repo. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put the repo for this site that we, I just showed you. It's it'll, it'll be somewhere on the slides or on the on the um, event, not the event for the thing on Drupaldelphia.org. Um, so this, yeah. So these are these are a lot of the gotchas that I found. Um, oh yeah. Also, HTML5 form validation didn't work well on vertical tabs again, like the person in the front was saying. Uh, yeah, I always turn off that um, HTML5 form validation because it doesn't mm -hmm. work on so many different things. Yeah. And then you can't even submit things at all. Right. Sometimes. Cool. Oh, That's I a guess. Nice idea. <laughs> I guess we are we are done done. Cool. All right. Uh, do you have any questions for Jen about her part of the thing? No? I'm just wondering if you have had the experience of trying to convince clients you really don't need all that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the so that initial approach versus the whole task analysis approach. That initial one is definitely something we time 
for, but to go through every persona and do that task analysis with the whole loop map, it's definitely a hard sell. It's usually get used to seeing all the personas, to get a few different analysis maps. Um, usually we, it's that one's pretty basic. There's a few that we can do that are a little larger that we can try and sell a little bit more because we found them so beneficial, but when we get something like a nonprofit site, that government portal is a little tough sell. Anything that has a smaller budget, it's definitely a tough sell because you want to go through and take the time to do it for every one of your personas. Um, so I'd estimate time-wise for me, for a persona, that probably took me about two to three hours per persona, which is not crazy, um, but to go implement that kind of what it, what it means for later on 